On November 4th, 2017, I traveled to Bowling Green, Florida. The reason? I wanted to film the International Space Station as it passed the moon. I was very lucky that night. It was a clear night with a full moon and I had a creepy as fuck parking lot all to myself. So, armed with my phone, a tripod, and a Nikon P900 at full zoom, I captured one of the best shots of my life. After capturing that video, I uploaded it to YouTube and it got a lot of positive feedback. In fact, I even encouraged some people to try it for themselves. That footage got people interested in space. And I'm not going to lie, that is a great feeling. However, it also got a lot of comments from conspiratards who don't believe that the ISS exists, at least in the way that NASA claims. I've gotten everything from, it's just a hologram, to, it's a balloon. Somehow. Well, if you want to believe that NASA has epic holographic technology that would make Tupac roll over in his grave, then be my guest. And if you think it's a balloon, then please get the fuck off my channel because you're too dumb to talk to. I mean, seriously, what the fuck? Oh, and by the way, did you know that you can do this observation yourself? Even basic bitch zoom cameras from Walmart will be enough to capture the ISS. So do it yourself if you don't believe me. However, of the assertions that have been made in my comment section, there is one that we can debunk for the conspiratards. And we can put yet another point of verification that the ISS is what NASA says it is. That assertion is that the ISS is not in space, and therefore, not a space station. According to the conspiratards, what I filmed was nothing more than a high-altitude aircraft like a drone or a spy plane, and it only exists to fool observers on the ground like me. Well, that's quite a claim, and that would mean that the altitude of the ISS should be, at most, around 100,000 feet, and not the 1.3 million feet that NASA claims. Because at 1.3 million feet, it would be so far above the atmosphere that you would have to be brain dead to think that this was an aircraft of any kind. And that's the thing. Prove its altitude, and you show the conspiratard claim to not only be unreasonable, but false as well. And that's the question. Can we confirm this? Can regular people measure the altitude of the International Space Station? Well, let's find out. GoPro is recording. I'm about to start recording on my telescope. All right, it's uh, it's 3:47 and 17, right? I have 3:40. Uh, no, I have 3:48 and seven seconds is the transit current time. 3:46, 10 uh, seconds universal time. Okay. So we are two minutes. Two minutes. Just under two minutes. All right, understood. It is now 3.47 and two seconds, so we're about one minute out. All right, at this point, all cameras get trained on that moon.
30 seconds. 30 seconds. Alright. Transit. Yes. Yes. Transit. Boom. Saw it. Stopping telescope. Telescope stopped. The first thing we need to do is look at the sight lines from myself and Astronomy Live. You will see in this diagram that they cross at the International Space Station, and as they continue, they end up on different parts of the moon. This is called parallax. It's the exact same thing when you look at your finger through one eye, and then by switching to the other eye, your finger appears to move relative to the background. This is useful because it allows us to do a few measurements. So the first thing we need to do is find angle A on our diagram. And since angle A equals angle B, we can knock out two birds with one stone. Now the angular size of the moon is known. A simple search on Google will show that it's about 0.52 degrees wide as seen from Earth. If we overlay our two tracks together, we can see that our two tracks span a certain amount of the moon. In counting the pixel diameter of the moon from Astronomy Live's footage, we see the moon is about 962 pixels wide. The spin of our two tracks from center to center is about 224 pixels wide. If we take 962 and divide it by 224, we get a ratio of 4.29 to 1. So, if we take the angular size of the moon as 0.52 degrees and divide it by the value we just found, 4.29, that means angle A in our diagram comes out to 0.1212 degrees. 
And since angle A equals angle B, that means B is also equal to 0 0.1212 degrees. Now that we have angle B, we now need to find our baseline. Our baseline is the distance between myself and Astronomy Live during our observation. And according to Google Earth and the fucking ruler tool, we were about 1.11 kilometers apart. Yeah, that was easy. Now we have everything we need to do some basic trigonometry and figure out how far away we were from the International Space Station during the observation. To do this, let's cut our triangle in half along with its values, making it a right triangle. And what we're looking for is length x, because length x is the distance between us and the International Space Station during the observation. So let's go ahead and solve for x. 0.555 kilometers divided by the tangent of 0.0606 degrees gives us a value for x of 524.73 kilometers, or 326.05 miles. This means that during our observation, we were seeing the ISS from 326 miles away. Good shit, but we're not done here. Because now we can find the altitude of the ISS from the ground. Because you see, Astronomy Live was kind enough to stop his telescope from moving only a second after the transit. This gave me an opportunity to get this measurement from the side of his LX200. At the time of the transit, the LX200 was at 53 degrees. And yep, just like that, we have yet another right triangle that we can solve. Value x this time will be the distance between the International Space Station and the ground. To find x, we solve this equation. 524.73 kilometers times the sine of 53 degrees. And when we do, we get an altitude of... 419.06 kilometers, or 260.39 miles. And yes, that is even without taking into account the curvature of the Earth. That's right, conspiratards. The thing you claim is a plane is traveling at an altitude that is impossible for a plane to reach. Keep in mind that 260 miles is over 1.37 million feet, and a quick search on Wikipedia will tell you that even fucking rocket planes like the X-15 and Spaceship One from Virgin Galactic, they can only manage 350,000 feet of unsustained flight. Nowhere close to the 1.3 million feet of sustained flight of the International Space Station. At this point, Given the evidence and the observations that I have made, it's clear to me that this so-called plane is not a fucking plane. I'm confident in saying that the International Space Station is way above our atmosphere and therefore in space. Many thanks to Astronomy Live and Vincent Jones for making this observation possible. Thank you guys so much. You guys are fucking amazing. Their channels will be linked down below. Please consider subscribing. Again, my name is Red. This has been His Rhetoric. And as always, have a good night. And as Astronomy Life would say, clear skies, folks.